Hello everyone. I haven't done a video in a while, but I am going to post a video as a contest entry for uh, the Canadian Stud Muffins When I'm 65 contest. So for this contest, you were supposed to listen to an album that, uh, you know, you've heard in the past, you kind of just always felt it was good, and you're giving it another chance. So you're supposed to, you know, listen attently with headphones and, you know, come to a conclusion whether, you know, it really isn't that great or it's better than you thought or whatever. So I, um, I have trouble getting time to actually really listen to music, you know, uh, with decent concentration. Usually I'm playing music in the main room with all my pet birds and it's loud and it's something I already know, so I'm only half paying attention. So I also um, had trouble deciding what album to do. Originally I was gonna do a Red Cross album called Neurotica, which I borrowed from a friend because he really likes Red Cross and I've never really been able to get into him. And I used to have that album, so I was kind of giving it another shot. And I didn't listen that intently to it, but I didn't really, it didn't do much for me like it never has. Um, maybe at some point it will, maybe if I actually listen more attentively it would, but I just kind of decided, ah, I'm not gonna do that one. Then I was thinking I was going to do a Screaming Trees album called Dust, which is one I don't know as well as the others, and I uh, had ordered it, and it finally came in the mail yesterday, and I just kind of suddenly changed my mind. I st haven't even played it. I decided instead I'm going to do NRBQ, because I am a big NRBQ fan, but there, there are certain albums that... I just don't listen to as much, and, uh, you know, I have some kind of opinions on them, though if I sit down and listen to them, those opinions might change. So I picked Scraps. Here's Scraps. This is actually kind of a close-up of the old cover. It's uh, a picture of keyboardist Terry Adams' shoes, which are multicolored and kind of worn out sneakers. And um, this is a 1972 album. I believe it was their third album because their first album was called NRBQ. Their second album was an album with Carl Perkins called Boppin' the Blues. Pretty sure this was the third album. Um, my favorite lineup of NRBQ was when they were a quartet and that really started with uh, the lineup I'm thinking of on their, if this is third, fourth, their fifth album. Then they had that lineup for, I think, about 20 years. So I saw them first in 1988 and several times after that with that lineup. And then I saw them multiple times uh, where they had just changed out the guitarist. Um, so that's kind of my favorite NRBQ. So it's hard for me to go back and listen to the first couple albums because they were a quintet. They had a different drummer. They had a d different guitarist, um, you know, and they had a lead vocalist. And to me, it's just kind of a different band that has a lot of the same sort of sound but not quite so you know I kind of dismiss those albums a bit even though every time I play them I like them so Scraps Scraps is an album where they actually had um their previous guitarist um Ken Sheehan I believe was his name uh he had left and they got in Al Anderson from the Wild Weeds, who I really love. Um, but Al was still signed to Vanguard Records, so he only could do backing vocals on the album. Um, he couldn't, you know, sing songs, and he didn't actually contribute any songs to this. And I really like his both his vocals and his songwriting. But he's his 
Telecaster guitar sound, it just is a major part of NRBQ for me. So you can immediately tell it's Big Al. So that's a real positive for me on that. And Terry Adams, their keyboardist, um, his clavinet sound is like the other big ingredient to me in NRBQ. And really for me, the third ingredient is their drummer, uh, Tom Ardolino, but he wouldn't be on these albums till a bit later. So he's not here. You know, they've got a really good drummer, but it's not Tom. And you can really tell Tom's drumming because it's kind of loose. Um, but still, I sat down and I actually listened to this album twice today. Really enjoyed it. And, you know, if I was stuck on the desert island and could only have one RBQ album and it wound up being scraps, I'd probably be plenty happy because it's a good, solid album. Um, the And it's got variety, which is a big thing I like about them. They uh, have their bass player, Joey Spampanato, always contributes some songs. Or this is actually the first album where he contributed like three songs, and that helps change up the difference between like Terry's songs. Frank Gadler, who is the lead singer who left after this album, um, I got to see a band called Baby Macaroni, which was kind of when NRBQ was going on hiatus in the mid 2000s. And they brought back Frank Gadler, and then it was Joey, uh, the bass player, and Terry wasn't there because Terry actually was fighting cancer at that point, which he beat. Um, but nobody knew that. They just knew that, no, Terry wasn't playing with them anymore for some reason. Uh, so I got to see Frankie. And Frank Gadler, it helped me to see him as a frontman. Because he was kind of this little funny, soulful, Tom Jones sort of character. And NRBQ is funny. You know, that's a big thing about NRBQ. And it's just because they are. It's not so much like they're trying to be funny, really. Um, they're just kind of quirky, odd, you know, positive, usually. You know, they're... There was a thing about when the Love and Spoonful were playing um, in the 60s, their theme, their um, motto was that they were good time music. And that is very much what NRBQ's kind of direction has always been, that they're, you know, kind of this good time party band that's a bunch of weirdo hippies, you know, that don't fit in with anything except their incredible musicians and they do what they want to do. So there's always influences of jazz and country and rock and early rock, rock and roll all, and, you know, like 60s pop all kind of thrown in a big melting pot and they're doing whatever. So you get that with this album. Um, I mean, the first song is called Howard Johnson's Got His Hojo Working and, you know, they're not like a novelty act, you know, that's just their, that's their sense of humor. Um, so there's that one, which is pretty up-tempo, and it's a Frankie, you know, it's one with Frankie's vocal. Um, the next one's Magnet, which has become a long-term NRBQ staple. Uh, it's just kind of a lot of, it's very Terry Adams as far as writing, you know. I'm like a uh, magnet, you're like a piece of steel, the way you break my will, and, uh, you're like, how, let, I've got to read something if I do this, uh, I'm like a convict, you're like the FBI, I ask for breakfast, you bring a piece of pie, you know, and then there's always a great piano solo, or, or clavinet. Um, so if you don't know what a clavinet is, I mean, you'd listen to Stevie Wonder's Superstition and those Stevie Wonder talking book era albums. It's just like the, the keyboard that drove so much funk music and stuff in the 
late 60s, early 70s, but Terry Adams is a big clavinet guy, and the Honer clavinet is a keyboard that now is really expensive, and when he goes out on tour, he kind of has to bring three of them with him because usually he's like throwing one around the stage and it gets broken and he has to use the pieces from another and he's always trying to scour music stores to find another clavinet to add to the piles that he drags around trying to repair his instrument every after every performance. Anyway... I love the sound of the clavinet. It's a keyboard that sounds like an electric guitar. So it's kind of doubles with the with Al's Telecaster and a lot of things. Okay, what else about this album? Um uh let's see. Don't knock on my door is the third one, which is a good solid uh rock and R and B kind of song. Um and of course, good piano solo. Tragic Magic by Terry is uh, an instrumental. Kind of reminds me of like Last Date, if you know that country instrumental. Um, it's, you know, guitar, but then there's a real low trombone in it too, which is Don Adams, Terry Adams' brother. Every now and then he plays trombone on NRBQ albums and uh, he's part of the Whole Wheat Horns, which is like him and the like one other trumpet guy usually sometimes they go out on tour with Don and another guy and then um, the fifth song is Only You a Joey song which is you know a shuffle kind of ballad with a toy piano solo Terry does that a lot where he'll get out like a little toy piano and uh, it's almost kind of harpsichord like little clanky sort of thing um, and that, you know, it's a soft Joey ballad, which sounds a lot like John Sebastian or Paul McCartney. That's what Joey always brings, is he brings, like, a really good kind of pop song to the harder edge stuff, usually. Um, then there's Who Put the Garlic in the Glue, which is another Terry thing with lyrics like Who Made the Kitchen Table Blue, and who left the Bible in the pew and who put the gloves on a kangaroo and who put the garlic in the glue, who put sick and tired together, who, who is, what is a bad go-getter, who put a horse on a sweater when I told him I should have known better, you know. There's this NRBQ album called Tap Dancing Bats, and that's kind of the most whack Terry album there is out there. You just by the end of it, you're going, oh my God. <laughs> but I love that kind of stuff. You know, it's it's part of this band. And the seventh song on here is Get a Grip, which is just great. This, you know, funk workout uh, riff kind of song. Um, again, with the clavinet and the telecaster and it's got uh, Link Ray and his brother Doug Ray doing background vocals. And let's see, then there's Boys in the City, which is, again, like a Joey Love and Spoonful shuffle acoustic kind of song, singing about how he grew up in New York and used to sing on the street corner. And I think at that point, all of NRBQ were living out on a farm in upstate New York. So it sounds like he's on the farm thinking about New York City. Then there was a song called New Tune, which uh, again is like kind of a clavinet uh, acoustic upright bass. That's the thing about Joey is sometimes he plays like a upright bass. There's always this sort of roots uh, you know, early rock and roll sound to NRBQ that I just love, you know, like basic rock and roll, but kind of filtered through later stuff too. So let's see, after that one is the title track Scraps, which is just another weird song by Terry. They're throwing confetti on Furlingetti and 
everybody knows a little dabble, do you? You know, <laughs> and it's all piano driven, and then you get a cool twangy Big Al guitar solo and harmonica, and it's got a groove to it. Let's see, it's not so hard. I've got the word Beatles underlined here. Big pop song, monkeys, tambourine, solo clavinet. You know, it's one of those great Joey songs where it just starts and you go, oh, great pop song. So that's a good one. Um, accentuate the positive and things are getting better medley. So you got Frankie doing a Johnny Mercer song and... Uh, you know, it swings. Uh, Terry's got more like a vibe-like sound to his keyboards. Uh, bass solo. Yeah, so that's good. Um, do you feel it? They're just kind of, I mean, more upright bass and clapping. and um, Yeah, and then it ends with Ain't It All Right, which is another kind of classic an rbq rocker uh that one was written by their or original guitarist steve ferguson and terry adams and it just says killer rocker is what i've circled so so yeah i think i like that album <laughs> i may never play it and i always kind of think of it as oh it's kind of like a rootsy little feed album but it's not it's an rbq i just always want to have you know those four later guys on the albums and I get three of them on that album so that's pretty good so that's yeah sorry that's my review um for the contest and happy birthday Larry and uh anyway that's everybody have a good night good night <laughs>